Hi everybody, today's task is to have an actor that is really looking at all the characters in the game and react to changes in their gameplay tags, reflecting their abilities that they are used. We still stay here in the, uh, in the infographic in the same area about our abilities, about the gameplay tags that are used here. Um, important for us today is that we implement it as easy as possible, that we don't have anything in the main game thread, but do everything multitasking and really make sure that we use here the easiest way to set up monitoring and reacting structures throughout the game. So let's have a look how we do it. We are still in the example from the last session, though so we have an ability that is this finger shotting here. And we want to first kind of debug what ability tags are actually active. Um, opening our character class blueprint, we add a new function, um, call it kind of dump tags, just a debugging function to see what is active here. And here, you know, already you open a new tab, you just copy it in here, close it and yeah, pass it in. So that is just a function to take all gameplay tags and dump them to the console simply. So get owned gameplay tags, then we break out that container and depending what we found, we just print a string, no, we did not find anything, or we dump all tags for each and get debug string from gameplay tag to get the name and dump it to the console. Quite simple. And uh, let's switch back to the event graph. That was the old thing about the clothing change. Here again, copy and close and pass in. That is the begin event. Oh, just open, make it a bit bigger here and say confirm, do nothing, because sometimes you have a naming problem here. Yeah, we have here dump text with a space and here it's without a space. So just delete that and take the other one and reconnect it. That should be fine. Good. On begin play, yeah, we get a controller. We have to say request player restart next frame. That's a Lyra thing to really spawn your character in multiplayer. Then we have a box to set actor tick enabled. We do it for debugging. Normally you should never do anything on tick. For debugging it's fine and then we dump the text and let's try that out. So we run again. Here we are in the mode walking. Then we finger shot and oh, we don't see anything meaning we forgot to set that tag. Let's close that down and jump back to our finger shot ability. Ah yeah, if you see here the ability tags that is actually set. What is missing here is the activation owned text. Text to apply to activating owner while this ability is active. So during the ability, the same thing will be set, meaning we just take again our finger shot and set it here as the ability that should be visible during execution of the ability. Let's go play again. Yeah, we are here top left walking and now we are exiting finger shot and when it's finished, we should be back to walking. So that looks good. Now we need something that is reacting to it. Let's create an actor folder where we dump kind of small actors in. And first of all, I need the material because that material should then kind of be bright the moment we do something. So we say material emissive, opening that. And again, copy the very small node graph here copy and pass it in. In a nutshell, it's really just about, oh, that was the wrong one, sorry. It's really about um, having this green color and in the event that somebody increases the light strength, we want to have a glowing effect. Uh, let's make this here directly, yeah, okay. So we have this light strength as a parameter that is exposed to the blueprint and here it's at zero and then we have this normal greenish color. And the moment I put that to, let's say 20, then you see it's kind of lowering and zero again, it's back. And that is the effect that I want to see during our um, gameplay ability. So let's close that down and we create a small blueprint where we can put something that we can see, maybe a sphere. So we base that on the actor. Select, 
and let's call BP emissive sphere open it and let's add set sphere uh, here we go okay uh, that's okay with name and uh, yeah I think it's put it 50 here then it's actually just on the bottom and important we now take our new material the emissive one and make sure that we add it here uh, here we go so now it has that material let's look at the event graph because what we want to do we want to make sure that we register our event to all characters. The moment they do something like finger shotting, we want to react to it. So again, let's opening up, copy, close and past. And here we are. So first thing, we want to find all the actors. They have to be there, so we have to delay a bit before um, starting something after the begin play. So first thing is we wait for the experience to be ready. Then we delay, let's say five seconds to make sure that all the actors have spawned. Then we get all the actors of our class. The class is here BPBA hero, our character blueprint. We want to have all of them. Hero, okay. Then we loop through the class and for every character, we register an event. This wait gameplay tag add to actor or wait gameplay tag remove from actor. That is a multi-thread event, so it's not running in the main game task. So you can really spawn them in mass, there's no problem. And our tag is actually not this one, that was from an example. Uh, that's the next video. <laughs> and that is our finger shot, of course. Yeah, for the adding, and then we just set scala parameter value on materials our um, parameter that we expose, the light strength is to 20 here. And same thing when the gameplay tag is removed, that's again our finger shot, it should be back to zero. Good, looks good. We are just changing this one parameter depending on the current gameplay tag. Oh, there's an error. Ah, that's a copy past error because might be that your um, parts are called slightly different, so you just recreate that for each loop. So just add everything like it was down below, and then it should really run directly. That's quite often if you copy past blueprints and Unreal is unhappy with your naming scheme. I know that's wrong, that goes to the basic one here. Okay, so deleting that, put it down, and just recompile. And that works, looks good. Good, then we are ready to test that out. Uh, one thing of course, <laughs> we need our sphere in the scene. We don't have that, so just drop one of them near one of your player starts. And yeah, a bit higher, and let's run it. So. Top left, you see we are mode walking. Now we are finger shotting. And yeah, we see our sphere is reacting to it. And now we are back to walking and now back to finger shotting. So you really have a mechanism here that is looking global into the game, is reacting to changes to whatever actor you have if you use the gameplay abilities. And is extremely powerful, multi-threaded and very easy to implement. Thank you very much, see you soon.